Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated as we are about to commence. Proceedings have already, you know, started here in uh, Richards Bay, where we are seeing uh, uh, members of the South African National Defence Force uh, basically uh, queuing up here for the parade, which uh, commenced uh, a short while ago. And uh, the program director at the back, I'm sure you can hear, uh, she's busy giving details in terms of how the uh, official program is going to be conducted. And of course, we know that the president of uh, the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, in his capacity as the Commander-in-Chief, uh, is about to enter uh, this uh, venue where we are. And then thereafter there will be uh, other activities which include the 21 gun salute as well as the uh, prayer, official prayer that will uh, then be followed by, you know, the uh, address of uh, the President of the Republic of South Africa. But I'm joined by uh, retired uh, Major uh, General Mokwabe, who's going to explain to us really the significance uh, of uh, this day, uh, uh, Major General. Thank you very much for your time, by the way. 
only a pleasure, sir. And good morning to all your view viewers throughout the country. Uh, this is a historic day. And first of all, I would like to put this day in the, in the historic context that the men who perished in the SS Mendy had gone to assist the British Empire in its struggle against K Kaiser of Germany. Now, Kaiser of Germany, the emperor then, had observed that in the 1884 Berlin Conference, when European powers were subdividing the world unto themselves, Germany came out with only Namibia, Cameroon, and Tanganyika. Small countries like Portugal were controlling countries as big, colonies as big as Angola, Mozambique, Brazil. Small Spain had Chile, had Argentina, and the British, as you know, they were saying the sun never sets in the British Empire. So Germany felt that it was done under. And the first thing to do is to conquer these European powers and then seize their colonies. And that's why the first attack in 1914 was on Belgium. Because Belgium was having the Congo, today's DRC. You get the Congo, you control the world. And then they were going to France. So they overran the Belgian government, went to France, you get France, you get the whole of West Africa. Yeah. So the British Empire then called on all in their colonies mm. to come. And with the Africans, they suspected that these Africans can rise against them if they teach them on how to use weaponry. Mm. So the people of the SS Mendy were not soldiers as such. Mm. They were a labor component that was going to be carrying the bodies mm. of the British dead. That's why they called them uh, stretch bearers. Mm. They were going to be cooks. They were going to be drivers, right? So that's the, 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 the context of, of this the SS Mendy, that it, it were support for the Allied forces against Germany. Insofar as this day is concerned, we are honoring all those who fell in wars in this country. Right from our ancestors who resisted colonialism in the 16th, 17th century, including the best of the British colonial regiments that were sent here to suppress the Africans. We go through all the First and Second World Wars in which people on both sides of the divide died. We go through the liberation war of uh, the 60s and, and leading up to 1994, and we also respect and pay respect to those who fell post-1994, including the young man that we buried uh, just day before yesterday, uh, uh, Sergeant Mabena, who died in the same Congo that we're talking about on a peace mission, right? So today, what the president is going to do, he's going to put his hand on his chest. Now, uh, that symbolizes that the medals on my chest are nothing as I bow to those who fell and gave their all. That's the importance of this day. We humble ourselves, but at the same time say, just like Mandela said, never again, never again. Major General, let's speak about the role of the South African National Defense Force in the African continent now. Well, first of all, we say that the South African National Defense Force has got several arms of service. It's the Army, it's the Navy, it's uh, 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 the Air Force, it's uh, the South African Military Health Service, and of course you have intelligence and logistics. Okay. Retired Major General, of course, we'll continue with uh, this broadcast. I'm sure you can see the, the king of the Amazulu nation arriving in this particular commemoration, King Misu Zulu Kazulitini, being accompanied by the Premier of uh, Guazulu Natal, Premier uh, Nomusa Dube Mube. Of course, and I'm told that uh, we have to link back to studio for now, as of course we continue uh, with the proceedings and anticipate the arrival of uh, the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa. But for now, it's back to you in studio, Naledi.
cut you short. Yeah, no, no, yeah. this is in order. Uh, I think, yeah, he still has a lot to say. Yeah, yeah this, to this, say. this is in order. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. I have all your yes. Eyes. Yeah, just remember just, just, just to, to put it here, oh, uh, closer to, to the to the mouth. Yeah. He saw ne. He would be obvious. Yeah, Boba. Yes, yes I've told him. Yes, yes, I've told him. Yeah. So far, sure. it's been so good. Yeah. So far, it was all right. Yeah. Oh. As long as you just remember, put, put it here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. as close as possible. Yeah. 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 yeah.
example, there you have with the South African national anthem has just been sung here with the arrival of uh, the President of the Republic of South Africa, uh, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, as you can see uh, in your visuals there, uh, standing next to General uh, Ruzani uh, Mapanwa, who is the general of the uh, was the chief rather of the South African National uh, Defence Force here, as uh, of course uh, they commemorate this all-important day, uh, which remembers uh, those men uh, who perished uh, during the sinking of the SS Mendy in 1917. Of course, uh, we have been uh, speaking to various uh, stakeholders within the South African National Defence Force uh, from this morning. As a matter of fact, throughout the week we have been present here. Here, observing some of the uh, uh, basically activities that are being uh, done uh, by the members of uh, the South African National Defense Force. Let's uh, now cross over to the podium and uh, listen in. program commences in Richards Bay for the 2023 Armed Forces Day commemoration and uh, earlier on of course we were in conversation uh, with the uh, retired uh, uh, Major General Mokwape who was telling us basically about the importance uh, of uh, this uh, day. Uh, General you spoke about the role of the SANDF uh, in the broader context as well as in the African continent. Who is exactly attending this very crucial day here today? Today, yes. Here, Simpio, we have the regular force. These are the permanent members of the force. We've got the reserve force. That is a part-time component of the defense force. Civilians out there who have been militarily trained and are called S and when, like on an event like this. We also have the uh, civil institutions you see the king is here the traditional leaders of this region are here uh, then the political side that leads us the political side the executive is here so you have got a a, 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 a military family that includes the defense industry by the way without the defense industry there's nothing that we can do now this is the entire family of the military that's here now why the sandf the SANDF has got two components. The one component is a defense force at war that defends against the aggressor the territorial integrity of the country and the, and the waters and the airspace. Then we have a force for peace, a force that defends the nation against the elements, against disasters, against diseases, against everything that is about the best of human beings. So the Defense Force today here is demonstrating, and we have been hosted by the Navy, is demonstrating its capability to the region in general, I mean in particular, but to the community at large, that uh, we are indeed capable of operating together. So the Army, the Navy, and all the arms are here. And uh, we singled out the South African Military Health Service to be the one that shows the beautiful and peacetime of, of, of its defense nature. And uh, the operation is called Project OA2. And Project OA2 was planned in July, in July last year and executed from January. And throughout the whole region of Richard Bay, they coordinated with five different government departments, illustrating how any government department may say, we don't have the rich, where are you, the Defense Force? Because within us, we have the veterinary session. So our veterinarians, vet, uh, our surgeons, our veterinary surgeons have operated on more than 1,000 animals in this, in this area, including, in fact, amputating a dog. 
uh, our social workers have been busy advising young girls on pregnancies, sexually uh, transmitted diseases, and uh, we've been everywhere. We are able, our doctors are able to do dentistry, are able to do cataract operations in the field, which doctors, civilian doctors cannot do. So we are able to go deep into the rural areas, remote areas, where an ordinary ambulance cannot reach. We do reach. And to that extent, we show that we are a people's force, and at the same time, we are a defensive force, which can be called upon, as we do, to assist in conflict areas. So we are one of the major contributors of the United Nations peacekeeping forces. As you may know, the, the United Nations doesn't have forces itself. It calls upon countries that are willing to say, would you be willing? And we always raise our arm to say we are willing. That is why we were in Burundi at a time when thousands of people were being massacred. We've been to Liberia, we've been to the Comoros, right now we are in the DRC, For we've been to Sudan. So we've been and we'll still be everywhere, but when, wherever we go, we make a mark. The South African soldiers always make a mark and come back as better citizens than they went there. Earlier on, I was speaking to one senior member of uh, the SANDF and he was telling me uh, that if soldiers are not at war, they are preparing for war. Yes. <laughs> Having seen the uh, demonstrations that have been taking place throughout the week, what is your assessment and your observation of, of those? First of all, we are doing much with very, very little. Um, uh, we have been sh uh, shortchanged when it comes to budgets. Uh, and, and perhaps sometimes the decision makers don't know that we are a reliable arm of every single government department. You talk about housing, we're able to assist. You're talking about medical health, as I have said. You're talking about education. Our, our teachers and lecturers are called instructors, right? And the complete teaching staff is called directing staff. And these are at our schools of excellence. So every little thing that you can think of as a profession, we do. And therefore, I would say what I saw here now, especially last night and the day before, is that we had come to demonstrate to the people that we are for you. We would never be against the people, and the people must rely on us. But with the little, you can see that we're able to show South Africa that the enemy won't pass. But more than that, I talked about what is called intra-operability, yeah. how the different arms of service work together to stop the enemy. Okay. But we also talk right. about interoperability, okay. and I'll explain to you more about that. Okay, Major, Major General, General, thank you so much for your time, and of course, uh, we are going to continue uh, basically giving our viewers a blow-by-blow -blow coverage in terms of the proceedings here. As you can see in your visuals, I'm seeing members of uh, the South African National Defense Force conducting that parade, which is just uh, concluded, and the president is already seated, meaning that the program has now officially begun. But of course, we'll continue with this coverage, but for now, let's link back to Studio 2, Naledi and Desiree. The President of the Republic of South Africa will now award the Naval Awards to the deserving members of the South African National Defense Force. The President has been pleased to award the Ngoya Hauda in Institution 27 April 2003 by a warrant dated 16 April 2003. Two members will now step forward the members of the South African National Defense Force who have distinguished themselves by performing acts of exceptional bravery during military operation. Lieutenant Colonel Mahogo. Lieutenant Colonel Mahogo. 
Ms. K. Mandel will be receiving the medal on behalf of 07, 00, 78, 59, MC, AP, from the Mandel. of conspicuous bravery during military operation. Sergeant Maseko. Sergeant Maseko. Sergeant Mukhadizwe. Sergeant Mukhadizwe. Sergeant Mutuni. Sergeant Mutuni. Sergeant Matou. Sergeant Matou. 
Sajan Zwan Sajan Zwan Kukomparal Mutabe Kukomparal Mutabe Sajen Mukhadije Sajen Mukhadije Sajen Matou Sajen Zwani Kukopral Mutabe Bronze, Bronze Leopard. The President has been pleased to award the Ngoya Bronze Institution 27 April 2003 by warrant dated 16 April 2003 to members who now step forward be members of the South African National Defense Force who have distinguished themselves by performing acts of bravery during military operation. Warrant Officer Class 2, Shirinda. What an officer class two, Shirinda. Staff Sergeant Mabasa. Staff Sergeant Mabasa. at last two Shirinda. Staff Sergeant Mabasa. Ceremony. 
the president of the Republic of South Africa is requested to deliver his keynote address. His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu Kazuelitini, Minister of Deputy Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, Mr. Tabang Makweta, Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Rudzani Mapanya. Acting Secretary for Defense, Dr. Tulekile Gamede, the Plenary Defense Staff Council, Generals, Admirals, Officers, Warrant Officers, Non-Commissioned Officers, Soldiers, Sailors, Airmen, and women on parade, chiefs of the Defense Force from our neighboring countries who have visited us, and chiefs of the, Air, of the Navy from other countries who have also visited us, guests and ladies and gentlemen, former chiefs of the South African National Defense Force, such as General Schoppe, who is here with us, fellow South Africans, I am indeed honored to be addressing you on this very special day here in Richards Bay. Every year we observe the Armed Forces Day to recognize and to celebrate the immense contribution that is made by the members of our Armed Forces in creating a better life for the people of South Africa and for the people of our region, SADC, and of course our beloved continent, Africa. On this day, we remember and pay tribute to all our fallen men and women in uniform who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Among these, we remember those who tragically lost their lives when the SS Mendy sank on this day 106 years ago in the English Channel during the First World War. As we mark this day, we appreciate that our armed forces are continuing the pursuit of the ideal for which their departed predecessors lived for. They have picked up the spears of our fallen heroes and heroines and continue the effort to give our people lasting peace, security and stability. As the Commander-in-Chief, I commend the good work you are all doing as men and women in the uniform of our country. As we gather to honor the serving members of our armed forces, those who have served in the past and those who have fallen over the years, we are reminded that we stand on the shoulders of patriots such as Reverend Isaac Wokop Joba, who, when confronted with the death aboard the SS Mendy, led his countrymen in song. 
even as death was descending upon them. We are inspired by their bravery as we stand here in the face of grave challenging challenges confronting our society. We are determined to emerge triumphant from the struggle against poverty, inequality, unemployment, gender-based violence, crime, disease, and deprivation. While our armed forces are always on guard to defend our hard-earned sovereignty and constitutional democracy, as well as our constitutional order, they do much more than just that. They actively contribute to the social and economic development of our country. They are to be found on rescue missions in times of disaster. They are to be found rebuilding and building bridges where a desperate needs exist, they are found, and they are also to be found rehabilitating our rivers from the effects of pollution. They have time and time again shown that they are a force for good and they are an integral part of all progressive humanity. I wish to pay tribute to all members of our armed forces who, at great risk to their own lives, work tirelessly to help maintain law and order in times of crisis. I commend the highest level of discipline with which they discharge their duties under very difficult conditions. By virtue of their calling, as well as their allegiance to our Constitution, they act without hesitation whenever they are called upon to do so. They act without hesitation when their country needs them most. I salute you all who carry out tasks in time of disaster that literally stand between life and death. We commend the exemplary selflessness, self-sacrifice and patriotism of our armed forces who, even in the face of great danger, always put the interests of the country first always put the interests of South Africans first. From North Africa to Southern Africa, from the Sahel region and the west part of our continent to the Horn of Africa on the east part of our continent and the Great Lakes region in the central part of our continent, South Africa depends on the South African National Defense Force to support peace building on the continent as part of a mandate from the African Union and the United Nations. We extend our appreciation and respect to our forces deployed in various missions across our beautiful continent, Africa. We mourn all those who have lost their lives in the effort to silence the guns on our continent. Just two weeks ago, we lost Flight Sergeant Wusi Mabena when his helicopter came under attack in Eastern DRC we extend our deepest sympathies and condolences to his family, his friends, and his colleagues. He is not alone. And this morning, 
We've just given posthumous medals to the families of others who have also departed. Unlike the apartheid era South African Defense Force, the Democratic South African National Defense Force is committed to forging peace and supporting development. The primary function of the SANDF is to protect the territorial integrity of our nation's borders. It is a tough task. We read of their successes every month, almost every week, as they confront illegal migration and international crime syndicates working hand in hand with our nation's law enforcement agencies as part of the long-running Operation Corona. Our soldiers are there to stand guard in times of crisis within our borders, and they did so resolutely during Operation Prosper. Now the South African National Defense Force is guarding vital infrastructure against those who would endanger the security of the state to advance their own personal interests. We have deployed them in vital areas where we have our infrastructure, for instance in ESCOM and in various other parts, water systems and so forth. We called on the South African National Defense Force during the initial phases of COVID-19. It was a vital part of our response to the pandemic through Operation Notela. This included the work of the South African Military Health Service, which provided support to our public health response to COVID-19. It is therefore wonderful to witness the launch of Project OA2 to, to coincide with this year's Armed Forces Day. Through Project OA2, the South African National Defense Force is working with government departments to provide access to health care and other social services in communities in KwaZulu-Natal that are remote and marginalized. Project OA2 can be a great catalyst and a great help for change through empowering communities, giving communities the capabilities and the help and the way with all to improve people's lives. The South African National Defense Force is no stranger to the people of KwaZulu-Natal. Its members have been serving in this province since the devastating floods of last year. And I'm really delighted that we have in our midst the Premier of KwaZulu-Natal. We also have in our midst the District Mayor as well as the local Municipality Mayor who are part of these celebrations. And when I talk about the role that the SANDF has played in this province, Premier Nomusa Dube Ngube knows exactly well how the SANDF has come to the assistance of the people of our province here. Most of these members of the SA Army Engineer Corps and medical practitioners from the South African Military Health Service, they have helped to build bridges. They have helped to fix roads and have also delivered purified water 
when water systems have been broken down by floods. With the confidence and the faith we have in the capabilities of our armed forces, we are reassured as a people that no matter the circumstances, the South African National Defense Force will always be there to restore order, to maintain calm, support our people, and defend the territorial integrity of the Republic of South Africa. We salute all our men and women in military uniform on Armed Forces Day, and we thank them for their courageous and tireless service. Yes, as the preacher was talking earlier, it is our clear intent as the government of the Republic of South Africa to look after our men and women in uniform, to care for them, to make sure that they have the way with all to de continue defending the people of South Africa with all their capabilities. We're also very proud and pleased to have members of parliament here with us and members of the provincial council here with us, legislature with us. And this is an important day. Armed Forces Day is a day in which we celebrate those who are prepared to fight, to defend, and to lay down their lives for the sake of peace in our country. May God continue to bless South Africa, and may God continue to protect South Africa, and may God continue to protect the men and women in uniform. I thank you. The handing over of the South African National Defense Force flag will now commence. Please take note. Please take note that during the flag ceremony there will be a general salute, including a 17-round gun salute. All spectators are required to remain seated, and only the ceremonial guard will acknowledge the salute.
Upon the commemoration of the establishment of the South African National Defence Force, the South African National Defence Force flag is handed from the Chief of the South African Navy to the Chief of the South African Army on this 21st day of February 2023. Whereas the Chief of the South African Army will have the flag in safekeeping for a period of one year on behalf of the services as a symbol of the unity, determination, and strength of the South African National Defence Force, the title Keeper of the Flag is bestowed upon you. In this capacity, you are hereby charged to ensure that the South African National Defence Force flag is unfurled and displayed in the appropriate manner at the South African Army Headquarters. The flag, being the symbol of unity, determination and strength of the South African National Defence Force, is to be treated with respect at all times. During the next commemoration of Armed Forces Day, you are to present the flag in an appropriate manner to the next appointed keeper of the flag. The handing over of the score will now commence. The 71 gun salute will now commence.
ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the flag ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the matching columns, mechanized columns and the mass fly past from the services and divisions of the South African National Defense Force will now commence.
ladies and gentlemen, approaching from the west to east, in other words, from the left, are the marching columns from the four arms of St. Vincent of the South African Nation of Defense Force. Namely, the South African Army, the South African Air Force, the South African Navy, and the South African Military Health Service. Spectators are reminded to stand when the various color of the matches cross their line of vision. All military spectators are required to salute, and all military civilian spectators are required to compliment by removing their headdress. Well, indeed, as we're coming to you right here from Richards Bay, where the Commander-in-Chief of the South African uh, Defence Force just, you know, uh, paid tribute uh, on this, uh, you know, a day of Army, Arms Force Day, rather, uh, where the military, you know, um, is being celebrated, but also the President not missing a chance to speak about an incident that happened about 106 years ago when a ship that was carrying about uh, uh, that was carrying rather uh, soldiers uh, of South Africans. That was happening at the time. Yeah, you could tell that you know the role of soldiers indeed uh, uh, did. You know, it's 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 very difficult. Also, we know that in this case, we know that it also you know reflects as if it's gloomy. But the army also you know goes through challenges. But with me, I'm with. Uh, Major General Mokwapi, continue the conversation. Uh, Major General, uh, the President spoke uh, about uh, a lot of issues here, you know, uh, paying tribute to those who have fallen. Um, I guess being, you know, uh, in the Army is not as easy as one might think. It also comes with its own difficulties. Yes, yes, Ntantla. Uh, 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 um, uh, what we have seen uh, today uh, the different arms of uh, service uh, all coming together uh, demonstrating the ability to pull events of this nature more than 8,000 8, participants came from all over the country and to bring weaponry and men and women and, and to invite international guests uh, to do all that demonstrates an ability by the Defense Force to organize major events such as this. The President touched on very, very important and key issues. First of all, he recognizes that the soldiers and the sailors are ready to put their lives on the line for the freedom of the people. And he kept on talking about the wherewithal, the wherewithal, both of the nation and of the necessary necessary uh, support that must be given by all of us government treasury the treasury uh, uh, the, the legislature the parliamentarians who are here and uh, he says let's make sure that the defense force is assisted through resources and all Indeed. to do this sorry to, to continue you also touched on operation uh way to yes. uh, just briefly talk to us with regards to that i mean you've been in the army for yes. you know served for a long time right yes um uh, in Tantra i can see there's a difference between the army the army is just one part mm -hmm. of our defense force we have the navy yeah. we have the air force yeah. We have the military health service, we have uh, logistics and intelligence. Uh, those are the four services and divisions. Now, being in the defense force, we also say in peacetime, in peacetime, how does the benefit, the nation benefit from our knowledge? The kind of things that we're able to do are again, just like when we defend the country against the aggressor, so also we are the first to be in the field should the, the society need us. Now, there are certain very deep rural areas, as we have seen here in, in KwaZulu Natal. Deep areas, very remote, very marginalized, where an ambulance cannot go. And, and we also saw him, you know, we also saw today during the ceremony uh, that in one gunshot for a civilian like me, I was so, you know, well, surprised. Yeah. Can, you, can you talk to us with regards to a right. bit more about now, that? Now, as we say, this is a celebration of, of, of victory over all the evils that had fall, befallen our country, right? So what is happening here is 
the, the 21 gun salute is the highest form of honoring those who came before you or honoring the highest person in this case it was not so much for the president and who is also commander-in-chief who is also patron of the veterans it was truly for the fallen of the Mendi, for the fallen of the Zulu warriors and other tribes warriors who fought colonialism is also victory, uh, 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 symbolic of victory over apartheid as recently as after 1994. As we wrap up, it's not all gloomy. Uh, we know we are here to commemorate, we are here to honor. We are also here to showcase to young people that it's fun being the army. Absolutely. In a minute, if you can just take us through you know, the challenges that you know, uh, the SNDF is facing. I mean, I spoke to an analyst who said to me that you know, um, he's confident that uh, a South African National Defense Force can stand anything, but what is, what was worried about the budget allocation. Yeah, the budget allocation is a key thing, and we would like people to know. We can't, after having these soldiers uh, uh, sacrificing like this, and, and when they reach an age where they cannot be combat ready, throw them out there. We've got to keep them, reskill them, and they must be absorbed by the employer environment. In, that is our biggest challenge. Indeed, thank, you, thank, so thank you so much, much for your thank time. Thank you very much. Uh, that was the president who was speaking. Uh, that was um, retired Major General Mugwake there, you know, uh, just talking to us about celebrations here. And also there, as you heard, he also touched on, you know, what, you know, um, the SNDF is facing. And also saying that the 21 gun salute is not only for the president, but for each and every, you know, warrior that has fallen. With that being said, it's back to your studio.
program at your children was to use in any way to remember to add a mechanic's name to display the capabilities of the South African National Defense Force. Ladies and gentlemen, approaching now the South African military police, led by Captain Hart, the members of the military police division. First in line are the operational motorbikes consisting of the Honda 700cc and Honda 750cc. They utilize during operations and exercises to patrol the main supply routes, escort VIPs and crime prevention. Followed by the Land Cruiser SUVs, which are utilized to support the deployed forces at the border lines for patrol as command vehicles. Then behind them are the Land Cruiser pickups, which are also utilized to support the deployed forces during the borderline operations conduct visible policing and investigation. Followed by the Land Rovers, which are utilized during operations and exercises and command vehicles and can also be deployed as crime prevention and investigation vehicles. And lastly, approaching, we've got the Mamba Mark III vehicles, which is a combat vehicle that carries a province section during operations and exercises for maneuver and mobility support. It is also utilized at the traffic control post and is usually mounted with a light machine gun for offensive and defensive maneuvers of own personnel. Ladies and gentlemen, the South African Military Police, I will now hand over to Colonel Khasabani. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. As we introduce you to the pride of lions as the South African Army. The mechanized columns from the South African Army today, led by Lieutenant Colonel Malachi, the officer commanding of one South African infantry battalion out in the center city, Lumpenbein. She is in her Rato 12.7 command. This is with a one-man turret that is able then to provide protection to both the crew as well as the HQ itself with a uh, singular main weapon that it carries behind. These various other uh, command vehicles, such as the, the second in command, also in a 12-7, as well as the intelligence officer that is using the same vehicle platform as the commander. They are all in the RATO 12.7 millimeter vehicle. It's a six by six vehicle and it is a modularized vehicle. Next, ladies and gentlemen, is in a two-man turret, the Rauto 20. It is armed with a 20 millimeter quick firing gun. It's a two-man turret, it's got a, uh, a main gun, and you have got there the vehicle of choice for the fighting mechanized elements of the South African Army, and particularly the South African Army Infantry. The Rato 20, has been a trusted workhorse of the fighting mechanized soldiers for, for years and it continues to be a trusted behind them. As we start with the support vehicles, we have got the 60 millimeter vehicle, around 60 as we call it. It has got the 60 millimeter bridge loaded water system as well as the 762 machine gun uh, coaxially mounted uh, with it in a, a two-man turret. Next, we have got the 81 millimeter Rato that has got the said motor system that is utilized in an assault role, making sure then that inherently the mechanized infantry has got their own indirect firepower capability. The anti-tank capabilities provided then, the ladies and gentlemen, by the Rato 90 with the 90mm quick firing gun as well as the 762 as a secondary weapon of these. The next in the column, ladies and gentlemen, coming in you from the Nail State Home Company of South Africa, the new badge of vehicle, the infantry fighting vehicle. We have got in front the 12.7 command. It is followed by the section variant the, that is armed with the 30 millimeter Daniel cam gun, linkless. 
days, and that is the four that are behind the command. Then we have got the missile variant that carries the 127 millimeter missile, also from the NEL. And lastly, the ambulance that can carry either a six a patient sitting or three a patient lying, as you see passing in front of you. These two mobility ladies and gentlemen is aimed at providing increased mobility of protection as well as accurate fire while on the move and unmatched flexibility that is to be added to the already fledging mechanized capability of the South African Army. The next capability, ladies and gentlemen, is the motorized infantry capability. They are in their two typical Casper armored vehicles. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the capabilities with which the South African Army is able to protect and consolidate on the gains that are made on battlefield by making sure that not only can they fight to win the ground, but they can also maintain the won ground to ensure that the gains won on the battlefield are not lost. The last of these capabilities, ladies and gentlemen, from the South African infantry is the light capability, light infantry. They are in the Mamba armored vehicles. Contained in this capability, ladies and gentlemen, are the canine or the dog capability. They have got also the motorcycle capability as well as the horses that they use. They are aimed at making sure that our rear areas are protected from any possible opposing forces interference. I'm going to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Engelbert to take us through the armor. Ladies and gentlemen, South African Army Armored Corps. Our first vehicle is the 76 millimeter Mark 1D Waycut Armored Car. Ladies and gentlemen, this vehicle is known for its high mobility, high firepower, and its versatility. to 
Thank you, colleague. Ladies and gentlemen, we introduce the gunners, the South African Army Artillery. They are led by their commander in a technical command post. It is a 12,7 rifle. Behind them is the observation post officers. They are in their basic artillery observation system, which is a Rattle 60. Their role is to ensure that there is a control to their fall of shot. Behind them, ladies and gentlemen, is the Sam 100 fire control post. This is the position from where the ballistic computation for accurate predicted fire of the South African artillery gets conducted. We then introduce the first of the firing capabilities of the South African artillery, the airborne, air-landed, as well as motorized, depending on what is required of them, the 120mm M5 motor battery, the Cobra. They are on the Gecko logistic vehicles. Six of these capabilities, ladies and gentlemen, constitute the smallest firing unit of the artillery, which is a battery. The M5 has got a crew of six and ladies and gentlemen this crew can be configured depending on the mission at hand and based on what role they are to be utilized. Next is the 127 millimeter multiple rocket launcher system, the Batalier. There is a pack at the back of it that has got 40 tubes the system is capable of launching 40 of these rockets out to a range of 27 kilometers and it has got also a crew of six that is in a protected cab that you can see in front of the main pad. The battalion, ladies and gentlemen, is a high order asset. It can utilize the primary in the army in the highest level of the formation in battle, typically at brigade level, as the effects of this system are aimed at being enjoyed by the bulk of the forces engaged in battle. The battalion. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the, the third of the firing capabilities of the South African Army. It is a tow system that is towed by the Sam 100 gun tractor that you can see. But this one also then we had the driver's tank is the crew compartment. It has got a crew of eight. And this system, ladies and gentlemen, is capable of launching a devastating effect of its firepower beyond the range of 30 kilometers. For the G5, ladies and gentlemen, we call them the Leopards and has been the pride of the South African artillery for years. These capabilities, ladies and gentlemen, hail from out in Pochett's room in the northwest province of our country, as we call it them, as we call it them, the home of the South African artillery. Behind the G5, ladies and gentlemen, is another of the 155 millimeter capabilities. This is the Rhinos, the 155 millimeter G6 battery. It is a self-propelled system. You are looking at the compact mass of 46 tons behind the G5s here, they are being carried by their low beds that carries them ideally on our roads to make sure that we try and keep the mass intact. And we know that this system also has got a range, a static range of beyond 30 kilometers. However, with its high mobility and with the agility of the commanders as we train them, we are able to project the effect of this system beyond the 100 kilometers, utilizing the synergy between its, between its range and its reach, making sure then that where required, we can extend 
we can execute operations such as artillery raids with the G6 battery on ranges that are sometimes beyond imagination. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the last step of the firing capabilities of the gunners from Kochelstrom, as I call back to Lieutenant Colonel Engelgraf to continue them with the gunners of Italy and Ebolo in any defense of the Thank you, This vehicle ladies and gentlemen, it is also air landed and it has been used by the air defense artillery and armed forces, followed by the 60 millimeter rifle. It is the vehicle of the commander. The commander is the one who's giving command to his forces. After that vehicle, the next bit in line is the first part. It is a South Propial 23mm anti-aircraft gun. Ladies and gentlemen, this gun is mainly focused on engaged low-flying aircraft and low-flying enemy helicopters. Ladies and gentlemen, this gun fires 4 kilometers in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, it is followed by the gun tractor, the Sama 100 gun tractor, which towed the 35mm anti-aircraft gun. This 35mm anti-aircraft gun fires 550 rounds per barrel per minute, ladies and gentlemen. This 35mm anti-aircraft gun engaged low-flying enemy aircraft and low-flying enemy helicopters at the distance of 4 km from air. Ladies and gentlemen, the gun the 35mm anti-aircraft gun. It is followed by the This two blocks detect enemy identification at the distance of 120 kilometers. It also identify enemy helicopters and enemy aircraft with the effective identification of 80 the next capability, ladies and gentlemen, is the capability that is quite familiar. The commander in chief alluded to the utility. The South African Army engineers. In front, ladies and gentlemen, is the Huskies. These are the vehicles with which mine detection and the subsequent then destruction of such mines is done. And they are followed by the vehicle that specializes in creating the lanes, safe lanes through minefields. A safe lane through which all forces can drive through minefields. Next is the medium girder bridge. This is the bridge that we lay by hand over obstacles to ensure that the mobility of all forces is not impeded negatively anywhere we go. I'm indeed coming to you right here from Richards Bay where, you know, uh, the South African National Defence Force, you know, showcasing the military capability. But it's not only a day for that, uh, it's a day whereby, you know, also the South African National Defence Force, you know, uh, takes time to commemorate.
those uh, fallen women and men uh, uh, and also you know an incident that happened you know in 1917 uh, when uh, more than 600 uh, more than 600 rather you know South African soldiers perished while they were uh, deployed to go and participate in the first world war this day is not only about you know commemoration it's also about showing showcasing and this all obviously has a, a reason you know where young people are shown you know uh, how the army operates what the army has and you know what it takes to be you know in the military uh, but with me here i'm with a young lady uh, uh, patience malibana excuse me for that yes. you joined the military when we spoke you said you joined the military the, the, the sndf in 2019 yes correct just take us through your experiences to date and what made you you know uh, to join uh, the the army i mean we heard the president saying that it's not an easy task yeah um, it is not easy but definitely doable i joined the south african air force in 2019 after I just completed my BA in political science and international relations. Um, I'd like to believe that for me to join, it was a calling because, you know, while we were in varsity, we were discussing um, different careers where we would use our degrees. And one of my then colleagues said, you'd actually quite, you'd fit you well in um, the military. I had little information, but I made it my prerogative to go out there and research more about what is it that I can use or volunteer my skills in um, the SA Air Force. You as a young person, uh -huh. um, would you encourage young people you know uh, to join in to sign in i mean when i heard the president speak and when i read on it you know be like you 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 put your life you know at risk would you encourage young people i would definitely encourage young people to look into the different careers we have in the south african national defense force um simply because um, it is not only about the shootings, there are many, many um, diverse um, careers that people could venture into. Um, for instance, this past week in Richards Bay, I've been part of the chaperoning team um, whereby we escort learners to um, Fen Park area where different arms of services are there with different carriers presenting to these learners that listen here this is what we are doing we don't only hold guns yes we are soldiers before our professions but these are our day-to-day -day duties um, on a daily basis okay uh, just the last one from me yeah. in, a, in, a, in a nutshell mm -hmm. for those who are still type that's saying that the army is not for women what do you say to that I'd say the army is definitely for everyone. It's not um, based on any gender. There are women who are thriving in the South African National Defense Force. In the Air Force, for instance, we have um, Major Mandi Samfeka, who is a fighter pilot. We also have um, Sergeant Kalenga, who recently completed her paratrooping course, which is considered to be very um, challenging. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, one of the young ladies we met here. You know, what created... <laughs> You know, interest was that, you know, I saw her walking by and we just had a conversation, you know, and you would be surprised how many young people are part of the SNDF. But with that being said, it's back to you in studio. Physical man and busy ambulances. 
The fencing is a man protected armored vehicle. The physical man is for command and control purposes in the battlefield. It therefore has an office space capability. The fencing ambulance occupied by a medical group of three members. It has a patient capacity of four on a lying position and three patients are seated. It is utilized to provide medical support to mechanized forces and utilize the military of the South African Army in hostile situations. The white defense ambulance is utilizing these key divisions as the powers of the Republic. The white paint on the face symbolizes and the red cross indicates the medical service affiliation with the international communities of the Red Cross. The first ambulance is followed by some of the Soft ski ambulance, the medical group of three members, the capacity of four patients in a line of It has an hydraulic patient lift in mechanism to It is used for cross preparation and medical support to light infantry of the South African Army. Ladies and gentlemen, the Samaritan ambulance is followed by the NCUSA 4.4 capability, the medical group of three members. Patient capacity of two patients are lying in The left cruiser ambulance is utilizing on a line of origin and force prevention during training and exercise. The left cruiser is followed by intensive care unit. This is a mobile ICU system. It's managed by three medical personnel, of which one medical doctor is proficiently to support the medical staff in the years. It's utilized in the habit of our mother. The mobile IC is followed by the business pairs of steam. The medical group of three members, station capacity is to better light position. The ambulance is utilized to perform the It is a work force of South African military health service in terms of the day to day emergency response. South African National Defense Force members, their families, and non tactical military convoys. The ambulance is followed by a mobile clinic. It's managed by a group of four members. It's utilized for minor ailments. It possesses a patient stabilization capability in hostile situation when deployed tactical powers behind the force. It can also be used in operations other than war in humanitarian relief operations. The mobile clinic is followed by a chemical biological radiation defense behavior during a casual and mass decontamination station. This capability is manned by specialists from seven medical battalions in Pretoria. It responds to chemical and biological incidents nationwide, collaborating with other relevant state departments. It is followed by key non capability for military and veterinary institutions situated in Mongolia. Ladies and gentlemen, what's passing in front of us now is a Sergeant General Vintage Green Ambulance. It is a 1940 This ambulance belonged to Sergeant General of the South African National Defense Force, Lieutenant General Nisaveli Tamapa. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sergeant General Ambulance is followed by what you call Samuel Tony LAD Mobile Workshop. It is meant by a crew of two mechanics. It provides technical support to mental health during operation Ladies and gentlemen, that was South African Military Health Service. For the system of us, we serve the brain. I will now head over to the Grand General Schmidt. Approaching is the echelon of the Federal Field and the command of Chief Logistics, Lieutenant General Kolani Brian Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, from DOD Logistics Division, observe the Unimog. U5004 by 4 rural runway. It is a structural and forest firefighting vehicle. It can carry a crew of up to seven members. It contains 3,000 liters of water and 300 liters of foam. This vehicle, ladies and gentlemen, it is used to rescue, re recover, extinguish, and protect on and off roads during operation and disaster relief. Up next is the tipper truck, FRS 800. It is a medium scale transport, mostly used to transport built sand, concrete stones, 
and rubber from one place to the other. It can carry a load of up to four tons. Following that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Questra UD Crane Truck. It is a double XL transporter truck comprising of its own crane and lifting tail. Utilized and assisting during loading of equipment, it has a loading capacity of 10 tons. Following that, ladies and gentlemen, is the South African Forces Institute, known as SAFI, with a pantry capability, utilized to provide guaranteed training facilities for refreshments, entertainment, and other necessities, primarily for troops deployed, secondarily for military communities in their residential areas. Following that, ladies and gentlemen, from our hospitality services is our mass feeding, feeding capacity, MFFC 50 kitchen unit. It operates externally on a three-phase power and internal externally on by means of onboard generator. Inside it contains preparation equipment such as the oven, boiling pot, 20 litre mixers, just to name a few. Behind it, ladies and gentlemen, is, is the double amsab, the ammunition core capability container. They are responsible for the total cycle of the management of the ammunition, commencing from its design, developing, conducting surveillance during its service phase until utilization or disposal. Inside the equipment utilized in execution for one amongst other functions, which is basic noise simulation. And next, ladies and gentlemen, is the road grader. It is a more advanced earth moving machine. With it, it is a steer loader 4x4 TLB, known as Bobcat, which is utilized for small scale building. Ladies and gentlemen, is a famous excavator used for large soil excavation and loading on a dump truck. It is mostly used at one site. Behind them, ladies and gentlemen, at the rear of the echelon, we have the night fox trot, 60 millimeter rattle from my head to my back of the Samoa Lucy, who was responsible for the discipline and the replenishment of the mechanized column. That marks or that concludes the mechanized column, ladies and gentlemen. I hand over to Lieutenant Colonel Shoro. Ladies and gentlemen, the mass broadcast will now commence. The aircraft that you will see in the mass fly pass today come from all the squadrons and bases in the South African Air Force. The Chief of the South African Air Force, Lieutenant General W.S. Mbambo, PSCJ ENSP, leads an Air Force that is positioned to projecting effective air and space power through innovation in the theater of the South African Air Force operations among the nation itself. The appointed South African Air Force main coordinator for the Armed Forces Day Parade 2023 is Brigadier General Isaac Murienzi, Director Helicopter Systems. Together with him is the Air Component Commander, Colonel Makam Nandi Zama, Officer Commanding 28 Squadron Air Force Base Waterloo. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be seeing the formation of the helicopters at exactly 11.40 Bravo time. The ground lies and officers responsible for the safety of the flight post are Lieutenant Colonel Rami Pony, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Sir, as well as Lieutenant Colonel Sungu. This team, together with many other support staff and ground crews from various units, have worked tirelessly to ensure that this fly force is conducted in a professional manner. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the helicopter formation 
is led by Major Jade Adams, Consign Milo, A109 Flight Commander at 15 Squadron Air Force Base Devon. Ladies and gentlemen, the helicopter formation.
ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enjoy ourselves as the Silver Falcons will be blessing us with a beautiful air display for a period of five minutes. The pilots will be transmitting live. Stand by to listen to the pilots of the Silver Falcons from Central Flying School, Air Force Base Langebanberg.
a seat.
Ladies and gentlemen, approaching the station of Sardinia Guard for the final compliment.
Ladies and gentlemen, the final compliment will now be awarded to the main functionary. You are reminded to stand on the playing of the national anthem. All military spectators are required to salute, and all male civilian spectators are required to compliment by removing their headdress. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Yes, well indeed, Zinga coming to you right here from Richards Bay. Let me take this time to welcome you and our viewers at home as we continue, you know, with this coverage of Arms Forces Day. But with me, I'm with Colonel uh, Stebuho Todi, who's with the South African Air Force. Uh, Colonel, just talk to us with regards to um, what you do uh, in your daily life. Hey, good morning, Ntanta, uh, and the viewers back at home. Uh, by profession, I'm an uh, air, air traffic controller, but I'm currently the senior staff officer, air traffic management, uh, staffed at uh, or based at uh, the South African Air Force headquarters. Uh, my main role is all about uh, currently the management of uh, the South African Air Force air traffic control capability, as well as uh, providing the services that are required for uh, the South African uh, uh, Defence Force, basically. Quite, Quite interesting. interesting. Um, earlier, we had a brief discussion, and I spoke to you about, you know. Um, the terrains that uh, the South African National Defense uh, 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 Force has, uh, the speciality. For a South African, for a South African young person who would want to join and follow in your terrain, take us through what they have to do. Okay, look, at the moment, currently as we speak, the South African National Defense Force as a whole is uh, currently running the recruitment uh, uh, process and the recruitment drive, if I can put it that way, which is ending on the 28th of uh, this month, uh, February. And uh, looking specifically in the Air Force environment, we are recruiting all the way from people who want to become in my environment in the that is called the Command and Control Fraternity. And also we've got people that can also specialize in the protection services, uh, whether to become also in the logistics department and also uh, to become uh, pilots if actually there will be opportunities in that line as well and uh, also people that can also become uh, the, uh, apprentices basically in the environment we just saw uh, the final uh, salute to the president there just talk to us a little bit more about this we know that when this happens it is when the army is saying thank you to the president for coming uh, we appreciate it talk to us with regards to what's happening here what is this part called here now Okay, what we've seen now, it is a national ceremonial guard that is completing uh, the, their final compliments to the president together with the South African National Defense Force band. And, uh, but the national ceremonial guard is the, our front line of uh, the people that are conducting 
the drilling ceremonies to the president actually uh, the presidential uh, what you call activities or the parades that is being that he conducts basically so talking about the activities let me bring you here we just saw a couple of jets flying by you know flying past here uh, what is the significance of that in this day Okay, look, uh, uh, we are showcasing our capability in a role. That is one of the reasons why we are here in Richards Bay, to show the people what is the Air Force is it all about. So we got to see at the beginning, actually, of the parade, we got to see the salute fly pass that was uh, with uh, three Augusta A109 helicopters uh, during the 21 gun salute, whereby we had those fire helicopters that were flying past, uh, showcasing the actually carrying the South African, uh, two South African flags and the South African National Defense Force flag. How many? Uh, how many? Uh, aircrafts do, do do we have and what kind which, which generation, generation? Uh, 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 just talk to us with regards to that okay look we've got a couple of aircraft in the south african air force uh, starting from the the rotary wing aircraft uh, the helicopters uh, start actually we can look at uh, to become a helicopter pilot for an example we train them actually in the augusta a109 helicopter uh, light utility helicopter they've got various roles uh, that we're utilizing it for and then also followed by the oryx helicopter and also we also do have the 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 rifle uh, attack helicopter as well. One, One last question from me. How, how many women do you have in your terrain uh, where you specialize? Is it open for women or is it for men? Look, anybody can apply actually to to specialize in this environment. Actually, in the ladies or in the women environment, we've got uh, quite a few. As we speak currently in the in this uh, event, uh, we've got uh, Colonel Nandi Zama, who, who is a, a C-130 commander pilot and also who's in charge of that squadron as well. She's the one who's leading the Air Force component in this environment. I can mention a few all the way in the helicopter environment. We've got Lieutenant Colonel Petro. Uh, we also have got uh, Dumsi, uh, Major Dumsi, if I remember very well. She is the attack uh, helicopter uh, pilot in the Roy Falk. We also have got uh, Major Vayeke Zanella, who is also a helicopter pilot, actually, who's currently an instructor in Langabanberg for the training of the pilots, actually. Thank, thank, thank you so, so much, Colonel. Okay, thank well, you, that was uh, Colonel uh, Dodi just, just explaining to us, you know, what the South African Air Force is made of, talking to us about different planes they have. You mentioned uh, the Rayfax there, and quite importantly, you know, also talking about um, the space for women, saying that, you know, um, in his terrain, in his speciality, uh, it's not only for men, uh, but women can participate and can become a pilot. But with that being said, it's a wrap from us here from Richards Bay. Zinga.